Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen. His office was raided by the FBI. So yeah, this is a this is a pretty big deal. To call this a big deal would be the understatement of the year. This is actually a huge deal, and I'll tell you why. As you know, communications between a lawyer and his or her client are protected under the attorney-client privilege. There are a few exceptions to the attorney-client privilege. One exception is called the crime fraud exception to the attorney-client privilege. Before this search warrant was issued, you can bet your bottom dollar that the feds dotted their eyes and crossed their T's. This is not the kind of search warrant that would, generally speaking, be issued in haste. So what does it mean? Well, it means the, theor the theory that a lot of people had was that Michael Cohen made an in-kind contribution to Trump. And they're going to charge money laundering because they're going to say it was to disguise the true nature of it. So you can expect a, I don't know, three to five felony count diamond from this. They'll, they'll allege campaign finance vi violations as an in-kind contribution. They'll allege that it was money laundering because it was designed to disguise the true source or true purpose of the money. And there are a couple other things. Probably charge with conspiracy. Maybe they'll charge, they might charge conspiracy with him and Trump. So this may actually be a felony conspiracy indictment between Trump and Cohen. I mean, this is, the resistance is a wet dream right here. There, there really is, I mean, people are going to go on TV and they're going to spin it. There's no way to spin this. This is bad. This is B-A-double-D bad. There's no good way to spin it. So what you're going to see, people are going to say, well, this is a violation of attorney client privilege. This is a witch hunt. This, well, sure, I mean, all this is true, but um, <laughs> that doesn't mean anything, right? It's a witch hunt. Okay. It's not, not an argument. It's not an argument, as our friend Stefan, Stefan would say. So what, what is going on? Well, this is what happens with every independent special counsel. This is what happens with every special counsel. They always, they always go. They always go in an op another direction. So as you know, they went after Bill Clinton for the Monica Lewinsky perjury thing. And now they're way far afield of Russia because there is no Russia collusion. Here's what I said ever the, the day that they appoint the independent counsel. I go, they won't find anything about Russia, a Russian collusion, but they will find out that shady people – do shady things. So Michael Cohen is kind of a shady guy. I've always said that. And I'd also said that he never should have fought Stormy Daniels. Y'all, here, I'll read your comments right now. Who remembers when I said Cohen should just let her talk? Told, I mean, you know, in life, you see, in life, what you have to realize is that which makes you will break you. That which creates you kills you. And Cohen... Just being kind of a ball breaker, kind of a whatever dude, hardcore guy, is what made him where he is. But you got to know when to turn that off, right? You got to know, okay, well, this is my chief virtue, but this virtue, untempered, will become a vice. They should have just let her talk. I said that from the beginning. Right when she came out, Stormy Daniels came out, you can go find what I said earlier. I go, just let her tell her story, man. Leave her alone. You can't enforce an NDA in the post-Me Too era. I said that. I said that with Weinstein, actually. Remember when the Harvey Weinstein stuff was coming out? I said if any of Harvey Weinstein victims wanted to come forward, I'd come forward. I'll represent you. Let them sue me. You know, I don't care. You can't have an NDA in a post-Me Too era. And whatever NDA you ever signed, Bill O'Reilly's trying to fight his. They're no good, guys. I don't care what the law says about it. Your NDAs ain't no good. Trying to enforce them is just going to look bad for you. And a judge will find a loophole to not enforce it anyway. So this is, a, in large degree, a predictable self-inflicted wound. Cohen should have just said, okay, you know, Stormy Daniels, let her talk. Let her tell her story. Let her tell about the affair. People would go, oh, salacious affair. Can't believe it. Blah, blah, blah. And then it goes away after a few days. But this is drugged on and on and on and on. And th this is all, again, avoidable. So now it's a federal, federal criminal 
Federal criminal thing, man. It's bad, bad, bad. Bad news, folks. Um, now, is it a witch hunt? Sure. I mean, is it? Is this what happens with every independent counsel? Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. Um, of course it does. But that doesn't really have anything to do. It doesn't have anything to do with whether or not you um, Cohen's in trouble or not. This is big trouble. Again, the, the search warrant would just not have been approved willy-nilly. This is not the kind of search warrant a judge – judges usually just rubber stamp. This isn't the kind of thing that usually you just rubber stamp. This is the way it goes. So I'm going to read now from a blog by Ken White, who although he hates Trump and he's kind of an SJW, he still is one of those rare lawyers out there given real legal analysis, rare these days. So I'm going to try to pull that up. I can't get it to load right now, but here's what he said. The search of Trump – Lawyer Michael Cohen's office, what we can infer immediately. This is a big deal. It's very early on, but here are some things that we can already tell. Yes, this is a big deal. I put huge deal. This is a bigly deal. So again, we're reading from this website. His site crashed because apparently he doesn't – he needs, you know, pay his, pay his bills, pay his server bill or whatever. According to Cohen's own lawyer, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York – widely regarded within itself as being the most important and prestigious U.S. attorney's office in the country, secured the search warrants for the FBI. Assuming this report is correct, that means that a very mainstream U.S. attorney's office, not just special counsel Robert Mueller's office, thought there was enough for a search warrant here. Moreover, and this is where it gets important, it's not just that the office thought that there was enough for a search warrant. They thought there was enough for a search warrant of an attorney's office for that attorney-client communications. This is a very fraught and extraordinary move. So again, I'm reading here just to let you know. This isn't, you know, Mike Cernovich isn't the only person telling you this is a big deal. There is not a lawyer in the U.S. who isn't going to say this is a very big deal. So if you are the resistance, you feel really good right now. If you're a Trump hater, if you're a Trump hater, you feel good and you should feel good. People are going to, Cernovich, you're negative. Hey, don't argue. Don't kill the messenger. Don't kill Mike Cernovich here. I'm just telling you that as a referee or as, a, as a, one of the few journalists who call, call out everything, that if you're Team Trump, this is hurting. And if you're the resistance, you are through the moon, as the expression goes. You are, you are thrilled right now if you're the resistance. You're feeling like this is big. That's how, this is big. This is not big. This is huge. This is not a wave. This is a tsunami. This is massive. You can't, you can't even, it's so big you can't use words. This is so big that you don't even have a word to describe how big this is, if you're the resistance. So as this Mr. Popat says, he's a criminal defense lawyer, and he even wrote an article saying Trump shouldn't testify to Mueller. So again, this is not a typical resistance lawyer who just is going to say whatever hurts Trump. This is somebody who actually, ha you know, has some credibility and, you know, calls calls it kind of how he sees it. So he goes, "This is a very fraught and extraordinary move that requires multiple levels of authorization within the Department of Justice. The feds are only supposed to raid a law firm if less intrusive means won't work." Such, such a search requires high-level approval. The United States Attorney's Manual requires such a search, again, of Cohen's office to be approved by the U.S. Attorney, the head of the office, who is a presidential appointee, and requires consultation with the criminal division of the U.S. Department of Justice. This is not a couple of rogue assistant United States attorneys seeking, sneaking in a warrant. So this, again, this big thing, big development. This is, a, this is a huge, bigly, bigly, bigly. By the way, if you're on Facebook, hit the like and share button so that people can get the truth, the real journalism, the real analysis, not spin, not deceptive, just what's really going on here. So if you're on Facebook, hit me an emoji, give me some emojis and hit that share button. And if you're on Periscope, hit that like button and hit that share button and tap the screen a few times. And if you're on YouTube, you can't watch me because they gave me another fake strike. They claimed that an interview I did over a year ago with the guy from Gab 
was um, spam. I was like, what are you doing? So I had to put all my videos on private because they're just going through and fla they flagged one video I posted of Antifa, which was just a clip of Antifa. And they go, oh, this is hate speech. And then I appealed it. So they're just, they're flagging every video that I do on YouTube. So it is what it is. But if you're on uh, Periscope, tap that screen, share this video. And if you're on Facebook, hit the like button and hit the share button. So back to the analysis of Cohen's uh, search. Such a search requires an elaborate review process. The basic rule is that the government may not deliberately seize or review attorney-client communications. You, so in other words, you really, you really have to have something good here. So Mueller found something good, and he gave it. So here's what happened. Mueller, you know, it is. It's a, it's a witch hunt. What are you going to do? You know, thank you, Jeff Sessions. So if you're, um, you know, thank you, Jeff Sessions, for this. Um, so Mueller found something good, and then he shared that good thing that he found with the Southern District of New York's attorney's office. And then they did what they had to do. So this is big. No other way to put it. And this shows, uh, you know, thank you, Jeff Sessions, for this. Thank you, uh, Jeff Sessions, for recusing yourself. Um, thank you, people who um, defended Jeff Sessions. Um, thank you, those of you who said Jeff Sessions was not a buffoon, as I've told you repeatedly. Thank you. So if you like what's happening today, thank you. Thank Jeff Sessions. Um, if you're happy with today's raid, be sure to um, thank Jeff Sessions. So I'll make sure we put that out. If you're happy with the raid of Michael Cohen, be sure to, you know, be sure to thank Jeff Sessions for making uh, this all possible. Life, I tell you, life. The Democrats didn't want to confirm Sessions. And ended up, Jeff, ended up getting Jeff Sessions as the Attorney General. It's the greatest thing that could ever possibly happen. So life is like that. So life is weird. Sometimes you think you're losing. And, or, you know, so the Democrats say, oh, we got to approve Prove Jeff Sessions. What a ter terrible thing. We're losing that. And then turns out Jeff Sessions gets you Mueller and gets you Rosenstein and gets you all this great stuff happening to Michael Cohen. So if you love the special counsel, thank, thank Jeff Sessions. Just the way the world. Just the way it is. So, yeah, this is, uh, you know, wild. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Mike Cernovich. Cernovich.com. Today, for those of you just catching up, Mueller found some info about Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen. Mueller referred that to the FBI, the Southern District of New York, which is the hardest hitting U.S. attorney's office in the country. Followed up on the tip, the FBI today raided Michael Cohen's office, and they are now going through attorney-client communications Attorney-client privileged communications between Trump and his lawyer. That's where we are right now.